What's up guys, we are back at the dump trailer and I'm gonna do an interesting upgrade to it. Well, kind of a downgrade actually. But you see the cable I got going to the winch that I recently installed? Well, that is two gauge cable. And that cable is very thick. It's hard to maneuver and it's actually way, way overkill for the 6,000 pound winch I have up there. So I'm actually gonna be going to something a little bit lighter and a little bit different. And I'll show you why here in a second. So hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so in front of you, you were looking at some of the things I'll be adding to the winch. I will be replacing the two gauge cable with six gauge cable. And this is Bulldog winch cable, so this is good stuff. It is 10 feet of it plus a 20 inch section that will actually attach directly to the winch. So this will give me the length I need, especially when the trailer is in its upright tilted position. This is also gonna have a quick disconnect on it as well. And this should give me the flexibility to move the cable around. It's essentially the second part of this video so you guys have a clear understanding of what was done to kind of position everything picked up pretty much everything at Lowe's except for this I got this from e-trailer so this wiring kit is from e-trailer and then this cable holding strap which is really cool is from Furman I don't know if I'll need this but I'm gonna see if I can use it if I can't then at least I know I had the option to and it was with me and then I have some pieces to actually hold the wiring down in place so it's not flopping around. Overall, it should be a pretty cool project. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is disconnect the two 10 millimeter nuts from the wires here, disconnect the two gauge wire, and install this 20 inch section of six gauge wire to show you the difference here in size. This is about a half inch in diameter overall per strand. This one's probably a little more than a quarter of an inch but it's significantly thinner. And for the power output requirements of this winch, six gauge cable is more than adequate. So I'm not taking a risk of overheating anything or running into any problems. Plus, anytime I use this winch, I'll be using it with a snatch block if anything's relatively heavy, maybe even two snatch blocks just to double or even triple the capacity of the winch, put less strain on the motor, and at the same time, not require as much energy draw from it. All right, so there are some caps on the end here. So once I connect these, I can just kind of let this hang. But go ahead and move the negative terminal. Okay, so because these wires aren't connected to anything right now, too, I really don't have to worry about any chance of shorting anything out. All right, so the first thing I need to do is actually widen these holes right here so I can fit these self-tapping screws through them and connect them to the wall of the trailer. I don't need to make them much larger, so I really don't have to worry about contacting the wire, but I need to expand the hole to 3 16 of an inch. So, there we go. If you can see inside, it's still completely encased in plastic, not contacting any of the wires. Do the same thing for the bottom hole. There we go. Now these fit right in. Okay, now I just need to connect the negative and the positive terminal from the 20 inch six gauge section. I think a viewer left a comment actually saying that I should do exactly what I'm doing now, and that didn't necessarily convince me to do it, but it definitely kind of helped me pull the trigger on getting all this done. All right, so I have the cables connected. Here's the end of it. Whenever I'm ready to connect it to the battery, I simply plug it in right here. I'm going to swoop it underneath here and then attach it over here. So we're going to go to the other side. And I'll show you exactly how I plan on attaching this to the frame of the trailer. All right, so now I am going to attach this. What do you think, right there? Or should I attach it? Well, right here. I'm thinking right there, right? Thank <laughs> you. 
Right there, and I'm gonna leave this just a little loose. And the only reason why is because I want a little bit of movement in here whenever I'm plugging the bottom portion in. So I'm gonna put one more screw at the top there and then fasten that into place. Okay, so we got it mounted up here. I left a little space here just so I have some flexibility to mount the cable up to the bottom or to plug it in without it binding. You can see the cables wrap right around top. Everything looks really clean. Now I have some flexible wire loom that I'll use to put around here. It hasn't come in yet, but once it does, it'll wrap around the cable here just to prevent it from UV damage from being out in the sun too long. Now all I need to do is connect this part of the cable to the control box inside of my toolbox here. So, this is one of the reasons why I want to do this. This is that two-gauge cable. It is incredibly thick, it's not very flexible, and it takes up my entire storage compartment. So, I want to get this all out of here, disconnect it from up here, and just run the six-gauge cable, which is much easier to move. I mean, it is significantly smaller. It's going to take up far less room and be easier to manage whenever I actually have to use it. The good thing is there's no power going through this cable unless you're actually using the winch control. This is the cable that essentially provides power to either extend or retract the winch cable itself. One thing I like about how this is set up is that everything is labeled really well. They put red and black on the top of the posts so you specifically know where your leads need to go. Putting the protective rubber boots back over them. Okay, so this is really nice. This cable is so much more flexible. Whenever I need to connect the winch, I simply pull that out and I'll plug that in right there. And we should be good to go. Okay, so I repositioned the black cable so it's going in the same direction as the red since they're both technically having to feed to the same area. Now what I want to do is I'm going to create a little bit of slack here with the red because I want the ends of this to not bunch up. Now I'm going to put a mount right here on the trailer simply to prevent me from accidentally pulling on these cords hard enough that it just rips it off of the control block. So this is cool, and one of the nice things is that I still have this notch that Texas Pride had put on the toolbox, so it notches this area out, so if it's raining outside, I can close this lid and still use the winch without having to worry about any of this in here getting wet, which is really cool. So I can't do anything more to this part of it until I get the wire loom so I can cover everything up. But once I get the wire loom, I'll have all of this protected in a really nice high-end wire loom material that'll just keep it from getting damaged over the long run. Just gonna clean the wiring up here a little bit with the zip tie. And I have another one up here.
Okay, so we've wrapped everything up. Have the cable connected. Have a zip tied right here to this mount just to keep it from accidentally pulling off and putting tension here on the control box. All I have to do is connect this directly to the bottom of that plug and I can provide power to the winch. The other cool way of doing this, now that I have the toolbox all cleaned up, is I can feed this wire right here, close the toolbox if it's raining outside, and operate it from outside of the toolbox. So this is a very convenient way to do it. This cable's 10 feet long. In practicality, I probably have eight feet of cable here that I can use. I have a couple of inches here. So the point of this isn't that I would use the winch with the trailer completely in the up position or the dump body in the up position. It would be to use the winch whenever I'm trying to load something on the back with the trailer, bad graphic, but kind of in that position here, just at a relatively shallow angle. And this gives me a lot of functionality. It's gonna give me the ability, again, to connect it here. And if for some reason, the trailer dump body extends further than this cable allows, it will simply unplug right here and I don't have to worry about damaging the cable, damaging the trailer, or damaging the winch. So that's also really nice. I think what I'm gonna do real quick is tip the trailer up so we can see just how much of an angle I can get with the cable being at that length. And if you're wondering what that notch is for, it's actually for the factory cable, basically the cable or the control that lets you tilt the trailer up or down. So, we're gonna tilt it up. We're gonna see how far we can get it before it's gonna wanna disconnect. Pretty sure we'll be able to get it a fair distance up before we run out of slack. Okay, so what ended up happening here, and this is actually really cool that it did it, it snagged on this hole right here, or at least where it was going through, and it pulled it free from that connection, which is what I was hoping it would do if it ran out of slack. So we're gonna lower it down a little bit, plug this back in, and have it directly come off of the box here to see how much angle we get. Okay, now we have it free. Gonna go to the second section of the telescopic boom. All right, so this is about as far as I can get. If I go any further, it's going to pull it out of the quick disconnect, which again isn't a bad thing. But looking at the side, honestly, it looks like we're at about a 30 degree angle. It's not too bad. I think that that's more than adequate but I actually have a tool to check to see exactly what our angle looks like. Okay, so I have this really cool little digital angle tool, and right about here would be flat. Let's see what we're at. Wow, 30.7 degrees. You guys wonder how accurate my measurements are when I tell you guys how tall things are, how wide things are. 30 degrees, I said this was at 30 degrees. Okay, closer to 31 degrees, but still, that's pretty crazy. So we got a 30 degree angle out of it with the 10 foot witch cable. I think that's gonna work out perfectly. I don't believe I'll ever have to load anything at a 30 degree angle. I probably would have to load something at about a 20 degree angle max. So let's lower this to about 20 degrees and see how it looks. Okay, so we are at a 20 degree angle right here, which is about optimal for trying to slide something up the back. But in reality, I'm guessing it's probably gonna be more about 10 degrees if you're gonna be loading something like that thing we found on the beach. You know, we don't want this thing straight up and we want it at a nice gentle angle slope so we have the ability to pull it on without putting too much pressure on the winch or too much strain on the winch. So let's drop this thing to 10 degrees and see what it looks like.
Okay, so 9.9, .9, that's pretty close to 10 degrees. That is a nice shallow slope. I think that would give us exactly the angle we would need to load something in the back of the trailer. Let's take a look at the cable up here. You can see there is plenty of slack to the cable left. Don't have to worry about that at all. You know, I was going to try to think of a way that I could take more pressure off of the cable in the event I went higher than that, but I don't think I need to because, again, at 10 degrees and even at 20 degrees, I could see trying to load something with the winch. I don't think there would be any reason ever to need to load something at 30 degrees. I think you'd just put too much strain on the winch to try to do that, especially if you're at max capacity. But I'm really happy with how this turned out. Give me your thoughts. Six gauge cable, more than adequate enough for this winch. Two gauge cable was extreme overkill for the winch and it caused other more logistical problems with where I store the cable because it took up so much space. Let's wrap this cable up, throw it inside here and show you how much less space it takes up. Okay, so the cable is all wound up right here. Very compact, set it right there, good to go. I'm gonna close the toolbox lid doesn't take up any more room. That actually takes up about less than half the space of the two gauge cable. So I'm very impressed with that. Guys, I hope you enjoy it. I don't know if you noticed, but I had a couple people saying, why don't you have somebody come by and spot weld the nuts on the back of the bolts and also spot weld the nuts that hold the winch into the mount, which I did. So right now they are welded in place. If I ever need to take the winch off, it would definitely be a bit of a pain, but just helps make sure that the winch doesn't end up disappearing. And it, again, adds a little bit of peace of mind. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. This was a quick upgrade. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in the six gauge cable winch kit for this style winch. And if uh, this is something you like, I'd really appreciate it if you take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.